my dudes, today we are making another mirror. And if I had a nickel for every time I'd made a mirror on this channel, I'd only have two nickels. And that's not a lot, but it is weird that it happened twice. I made this at exactly the same time as the last one, but this one took a month to make. I had uni assessments, I had to like schedule in being disabled, but it's finally finished and it's a labor of love. And I just hope you guys love this video because it really did take a hot second to make it. But we are going to decorate this like sort of cardboard MDF mirror. And then using resin and UV resin, we're gonna create this splash effect. And I had a really, really fun time making this, creating this, figuring out how to make it exactly what it is. So enjoy watching me make this. Um, comment, like, and subscribe, or I will call your mother. And uh, I'll see you in another two weeks. Okay, bye. So we've got this mirror that I got from a $2 shop. And I also have all of these tiny little resin moons. I originally made these for a university assignment last year, so they're a bit uh, textured and they've got a little bit of glue on them because they were all stuck together. So after I decide where on the mirror all these moons are going to go, I'm going to spray paint them and hopefully the texture from that glue is going to give the little moons a texture similar to the actual moon, like with all the little craters. So once I decided where they're going, I got this iron lac spray paint. And honestly, I'm using this iron lac because I don't know if the problem is me or not. I'm not a professional spray painter, but every single time I use this particular color from this particular brand, the paint comes out really textured and bubbly. Doesn't matter how much I shake it. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but it is perfect for this project. So I'm not complaining. I went a little bit against the grain uh, with how basic the design of this mirror is in terms of paint because I knew I was going to cover it in resin and so I didn't want to get too technical but honestly now that it's done I do feel like I could have done something like a bit shiny or a bit duochrome but I'm definitely going to do this project again now that I know how well the splash effect turned out so I'll keep that in mind for next time. So I hot glued down all the moons. I stuck down all these little pearls that I believe were also from the same $2 shop that I got the mirror. And then I'm doing this sort of like flowy river effect with a pencil first, and then coming in with some Pebeo liners that you would have seen me use in my last video. So for the mirror, I'm using a dark blue and a pearl shade. And it's really important for me to do these pencil marks first because this product has like a pretty steep learning curve. It's really gloopy and uh, it's, it's just not easy to use. So I find it a lot easier to follow my own lines rather than try to wing it. And here's how she's looking. If I can be honest with you guys, I made this at exactly the same time as I made the mirror in the last video. I finished this mirror and I thought something's missing. I don't know what to do. I put it to the side. And then last week, I just wanted to explore this like splash idea. So I pulled it back out and here I am mixing up some clear resin with just a little bit of blue alcohol ink inside. And can I just say, it's taken me such a long time as an artist to be able to make something and then recognize that I can put it away and pull it back out later to make something new instead of just tossing it in the trash. But here I am pouring a very thin layer of resin all over the mirror, just pushing it out gently so that not all of it tips over the side. And I'm just doing this because at this stage, I have no idea what my splash is going to look like. I don't know if it'll be big or heavy. So if I put this first layer of resin down, it'll ensure that whatever I put on top isn't going to smash the glass underneath. So I made these trays and stuff with the overpour from that last layer of resin that you saw. Um, and I added just a little bit of alcohol ink so I could get this water effect. And then instead of properly cleaning out the jug, I left like a layer of resin in there so that I could peel it out so that I could try for the first time to make like a water splash effect. I don't know if I'm explaining that very well, but what I wanted, and I can't believe I got this the first time, like this is crazy. I pulled this out and it kind of looks like 
a water splash. Like if something has just hit water and then the water sort of splashes up. And I thought this was going to take several goes, but I'm actually like really, really happy with this. So let's have a look at what it looks like on the mirror. Um, and if we've got to change it or fuck with it or add something to it. But yeah, I'm just amazed. I'm amazed that I did this in one go. So we've got the mirror with the first layer of resin dried and it's got these little dimples in it because I let the I let the resin drip off of the mirror so that it would cover all of these pieces. So you've got these sort of dimples, um, which happens because resin like expands uh, when it gets hot. Um, but these dimples, I wasn't sure what they were going to look like. So I didn't know if they were going to look like water droplets or if I was just going to get like maybe some tiny pearls and like cover up the little dimples I wasn't sure until it was done and I knew what it looks like but so there's the mirror and then here's our like splash I will mix up a little bit of clear resin um pour it just a little bit like just pour it so that it covers most of this I'm I'm okay with pouring just like maybe a hundred mil of clear resin on here and having like the edges be seen because I think it's just gonna add to like the sort of like splash effect that I'm trying to create. Um, we'll see if it covers these little guys. Um, if it does, okie dokie. If it doesn't, um, I might put like some little pearls in there or maybe I can even put like some alcohol ink in here to make it sort of match what this looks like and sort of match like this effect that that alcoholic has in it um but yeah super experimental today and just loving it just loving making something new so let's get that resin going looking after that little layer of resin get, get flat so it's got this like splash effect coming out of it and I've just got like a bit of an irregular shape with the resin around it and then any of those little sort of dimples in that first layer I put dots of resin on top and then I put a couple of dots in random places on the outside just so that it'd like kind of match so we'll see how this dries. I'm not sure if I'll cut this bit because it's like quite thin and doesn't doesn't stick directly up in the air. So I'm not sure if I'll cut this bit. I ended up rounding everything off with a pair of scissors so that I could use some UV resin because my original idea was I was going to dip this into actual resin and then I realized that that was like honky dory crazy town. So let's watch me use some UV resin. Hopefully my camera can focus on how small that's going to be and we can make this look more like a splash. I've got my little bottle of UV here and also this UV torch, which I personally enjoy using more than those little lamps you see people use to dry UV or use to dry their gel fingernail polish. Anyway, so what I'm doing here, I've got my bottle of UV resin and I'm just squirting it straight onto this like upside down sculpture that I have haphazardly sitting on for plastic cup because I'm a scaffolding genius. And as the UV resin drips down, I get my torch and apply the UV light to the resin and then it's supposed to like freeze in time and hopefully when I flip it back over the drips being upside down will make them look like they're flying upwards. And now I know how well this technique works I'm definitely 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 going to make one of these again. I'm not sure if it'll be on a mirror um, but I definitely want to keep sort of exploring this practice with the splash and adding the UV resin and seeing like what kind of 3D sculptures I can create. So if you have any ideas about what I could put this sculpture onto, please let me know in the comments. 
and here we can see what all of those upside down drips actually look like the right way up. If I could make it again, I definitely would have done this splash effect first, created it in its entirety, and then stuck it down to the mirror and then decorated the mirror afterwards. But that's okay, now I'll know when I try to make this thing again. I hope you guys loved watching me make this. Let me know what you think in the comments. And for the next video, I'm gonna be doing some painting because honestly, this mirror took like almost a month to make because I was so busy with other things. So we're gonna keep it chill and fun next fortnight. Uh, but I hope you guys are having a sick day and uh, stay tuned to watch my little painting video. Bye guys. Hello, welcome back to another card painting video. As always, here are the materials for the first and second card. Also, I totally forgot, the second card in this video also has some little gems from Evolt Cosmetics, so I will tag them in the description. The great and malevolent Rainbow Wheel of Chaos has picked number eight. And I don't know if you guys clocked this looking at that little zoom in, but I haven't picked a single number from the 30s or the 40s yet. I don't know what this like seemingly random wheels agenda is, but it is anti 30s and 40s and I think we need to fix that. So in the comments, leave your favorite number and I will maybe pick it for next fortnight. Someone please give me a 30 or a 40 number. It's actually like starting to affect me visually in my art room. I just, I'm like assigning feelings to these numbers and it's making me sad. Anyway, tangent over, we pulled like a reddish brownish card off the wall and if you were here last fortnight, you would have seen that I started my Zodiac series. I did Pisces. I did also mention that the next star sign along was going to be Taurus because I don't know what the bloody goddamn I'm talking about. It's not Taurus, it's Aries. So here is me starting an Aries card. And this fortnight, I got out a really old set of Posca paint pens. You guys know how I feel about Poscas. I got my old set of Poscas out and I was like, I need to show them love even though they explode everywhere and they're not my friend and they just like to come out all gloopy and weird. So I was like, let's Google what the Aries flowers are because I'll be able to do sort of like a bit of a mixy watercolory effect on the card with these gloopy Poscas and everything Thing will be fine. I was wrong. The flower is a honeysuckle and these are like the most delicate flowers ever. I can't draw delicate things. I'm just out here with my big caveman hands and honestly right now the flowers are looking like those flowers in the background on Spongebob. So I do think I managed to make like a fiery effect mixing the ink from the Poscas together and making it sort of flames because Aries is a fire sign, but they definitely do not look like honeysuckles. They are Spongebob flowers. And I desperately came back with my little white gel pen trying to make them prettier or try to make them more like flowers. But I do apologize to any Aries in the comments because this is like a bit of a gloopy mess. I like the colors, but I don't know, man. He kind of looks like an underwater gloopy seahorse. <laughs> Anyway, moving on from that hot mess, one of my subscribers, Jet, chose the number 24 in the comments last fortnight. Hey Jet, your color is this like real pastel-y purple shade. And I thought I would stick with the flowers theme, but I was really, really done at this point trying to use my Poscas. So I went with more of like a 3D vibe, gluing down these gems from Evo Cosmetics. And then I'm gonna paint power, power flettles. I'm gonna paint some power flettles. I'm going to paint some flower petals, but using this technique where I've mixed like two or three different colors together and I'm coming in really, really thick with the paint. And you'll see on all three of these flowers, I sort of get a little bit of paint, draw the vague idea of a petal, and then I come back in with the different colors if I feel like there's not enough texture or I just want to build it up a bit more. So there is what the yellow flower petals colors look like. So I come in, do the petals, add the texture, make them thicker. And uh, yeah, I really enjoyed sort of painting something a bit more 3D and I did not enjoy waiting a full day for this to dry. That was not my vibe. But once this red flower is done, I came in and I added some leaves with some really, really tiny gems and a little vine using a Posca pen. 
And this design is not like Da Vinci, man. Like this is not anything crazy technical. You guys could totally give it a go. I just wanted to do something cute and fun, especially because after I sort of make something a bit ugly, like that Aries card, I really just needed to make something pretty that I knew would absolutely work out. And that's how my ego works. Make something ugly, make something pretty, and the world is balanced again. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this painting video. If you've got any ideas for future cards, please leave them in the comments. Uh, the next video is coming out on, I think, April 11th. So it'll still be Aries season. So don't be chucking me any Zodiac ideas, but please chuck me some numbers with your first name and I will shout you out. But I hope you guys enjoyed this Fortnite's painting video. And if you enjoyed watching this, you're going to absolutely lose your tits next fortnight because the next video is just me painting. It's me painting a bunch of canvases. So look forward to that. Like, comment, and subscribe. I love you guys. Have a good day. Lost inside my mind.